Well, Robert Spencer has written a book called The Truth About Muhammad. It's published by Regnery Press. It's already a New York Times bestseller. Robert, we welcome you back to the 700 Club. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Okay. The Koran, central book. Uh, you pointed out that a great portion of it is actually Muhammad uh, justifying himself, like he's going to go to war, so he writes part of the Quran to justify. He wants to take his uh, uh, daughter-in-law as a wife, so he writes something to justify it. His uh, little girl, uh, Aisha, nine-year-old bride, is accused of adultery, so he does something to justify that. That doesn't sound like a, a book for all people uh, of great moral truths. No, it certainly isn't, Pat. He got uh, convenient revelations throughout his career, revelations that, as you say, they justified what he wanted to do. And as a matter of fact, Aisha, his wife, remarked on that. When he did take Zainab bint Josh, the uh, wife of his adopted son, as his own wife, she and justified it by a divine revelation, uh, Aisha said, it seems that Allah is always ready to rush to grant you your desires. And that is indeed the case. Uh, is is this Quran actually a fraud? Uh, he borrowed extensively what from uh, Jewish, Christian, Zoroastrian stories. Sort of, sort of. Yes, there there's a, a great deal of influence. There are a lot of scripture stories from both the Old Testament and the New Testament in the Quran, but they're not uh, repeated as if uh, someone is working from the written copy. It sounds as if he heard these stories told and then retells them and presents them as his own divine revelations. Are you willing to say on this program that, that this essentially was fraudulent, that these revelations that you said in one place they come from Satan? I mean, what, what is the source? Was, was he just deluded or what? Well, certainly they're fraudulent, and certainly in one place he said himself that they came from Satan. I mean, this was a, uh, a notorious incident in his career, which was immortalized by Salman Rushdie in his book, The Satanic Verses, but he didn't make that up. Uh, Muhammad himself at one point uh, got what he said was a divine revelation allowing these three pagan goddesses to be uh, called upon for intercession by the Muslims. This was in an attempt to reconcile his own tribe, the Quraysh, an Arabian pagan tribe, with the Muslims because they worshipped those goddesses. But then he realized he would compromised his earlier message which was a pure monotheism. And so he said Satan had inspired those verses within him and he cancelled them. Well, you know, the president, I think, has done the uh, nation a great disservice by saying, quote, Islam is a religion of peace. It's actually a political system, isn't it? Oh, very much so. Absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, the year one in the Islamic calendar is not when Muhammad was born or when he died or when he got what he said was his first revelation from God. The first year of the Islamic calendar is when Islam became a state, when, the, uh, when Muhammad became a political and military leader. And uh, Muhammad himself taught that the Muslims must wage war against unbelievers, offering them first, in, in inviting them, in their words, uh, to accept Islam. And if they refused that, inviting them to adopt the second class status of the Dhimmi, the second class status that Jews and Christians suffered under for centuries under Islamic law or third, to go to war with them. So conversion, subjugation, or war are Muhammad's orders for how to deal with non-Muslims. And that has been something that Muslims have obeyed throughout history. Robert, uh, the West a few years ago, you know, the famous battle of Tours when the Muslims were turned back at Tours and they began to recede into Spain. Uh, the West was united against this force. Right now, we don't seem to be united. We, we have political correctness. We don't want to call these people who they are. We say, oh, it's just the terrorists. It's not the good Muslims. Well, what's the deal? Well, there are peaceful Muslims, but unfortunately, they do not have a leg to stand on in the teachings of Islam. All the sects of Islam that are considered orthodox and all the schools of Islamic law teach that warfare against unbelievers is part of the religion. We can be thankful that many Muslims don't pay attention to that, but we're deluding ourselves if we think that the, there is some benign core of Islam that does indeed teach peace. When Muslims say that Islam is a religion of peace, they're referring to the peace that will come to the world when it's the whole world obeys Islamic law. And that peace must be reached through violence. Well, what about the, what is the American Islamic Institute that's supposed to be standing up for Muslims and, and that uh, man, I forget his name, who, who's always on television telling us how great the Muslims in America are. Ibrahim Hooper. 
Ibrahim Hooper. What's his background? Where does he get his money? Well, Ibrahim Hooper is an American convert to Islam. And uh, where he gets his money in personally, I don't know. But I know that the Council on American-Islamic Relations, the group that uh, you're referring to, I, I think, uh, has received many, many large donations from Saudis. And uh, some, of the, some of them have gone to a library project which puts the Quran and Islamic apologetics works into libraries all over the United States libraries that incidentally do not have books that balance that perspective. What are we going to do? We seem to, because we're failing in our Christian beliefs, we don't seem to have a core set of values that can stand up against this militant faith or militant uh, system. What, what are we going to do to counter it? Well, I think we do need to do exactly that to recover our own values, and uh, not just Christians, but we need to group together, I think, all the victims and potential victims of the Islamic Jihad. Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, everyone come together and say, look, we, are, we believe in the equality of dignity of all people. We believe in the equality of rights of all people before the law. We believe in freedom of conscience. Uh, these are all principles that come from the Judeo-Christian tradition, and I think we need to stand up for them unapologetically and say this is being challenged by those who wish to impose Islamic law upon us and we're going to resist. If we don't do it, what's the consequence? Then they will succeed because they, it's not just a military struggle, it's a cultural struggle and as you have pointed out, we are not united and we are in danger of losing because we don't have the will to stand up to this. And then an Islamic law will be imposed, which is a very real possibility in Europe in the near future in some countries. Uh, Islamic law will be imposed that denies equality of rights of all people before the law and will subjugate Christians and others under Islamic law as inferior citizens who do not have equality with the Muslims. And we'll, uh, Subjugate women, obviously. Absolutely. As channels. Yes. Okay. Robert Spencer, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you ought to read this. It's a small book, not a big, heavy book, but it tells some things that you need to know about this. And when people are talking about Islam being a religion of peace, this is baloney. It just isn't. It just isn't. And uh, Muhammad in the Quran is teaching warfare. So at the core of this faith is militant warfare against those who are not under submission. Islam means submission. It doesn't mean peace, it means submission. That's what Islam is. And they divide the world into two parts. Dar al-Islam, the world of Islam, the others, Dar al-Harb, the world at war. And if you're not under Islam, you're at war with them. And that's the, that's the core teaching, not just of the Wahhabis, but uh, of all the madrasas that are training these thousands of young people. So yes, they're moderate Muslims, for which we're very grateful, who really don't probably understand what the Quran says. But for those who do, it is violent jihad. And it's time America wakes up before it's too late.